Hey everyone and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security device along the way. I'm your all-around security nerd and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting December 2nd, 2013. I had to skip last week's episode due to the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday, so let's go ahead and recap a little bit of news from a few weeks ago, starting with the latest from the Snowden and NSA leaks. A few weeks ago, we learned that Snowden released more documents, or specifically a presentation, and this one let us know that the NSA has created a 50,000 computer strong botnet. Uh, The presentation had to do with the tailored access operation. This is the group within the NSA that does hacking and their computer network exploitation. So essentially they've taken over over 50,000 computers all over the world and these computers are like sleeper agents that they can turn on and, and steal documents and do different things with. So it's interesting to see how even governments are using malicious hacking to take over computers. We'll share more on the story as we learn about it. Over the week, we also learned about some new Bitcoin heists. The first was a a heist or specifically a attack against a forum called Bitcoin Talk, a very popular Bitcoin forum. Uh, This site has been attacked many times in the past with DDoS attacks, but during this week, it actually had a DNS hijack. Uh, Essentially, attackers found out the registrar responsible for hosting a Bitcoin Talk site, and they were able to temporarily hijack it so that if you visited the site during this period, you would actually go to an attacker's machine first, and he would redirect you to Bitcoin Talk's real form. Now, this caused Bitcoin Talk to release uh, uh, warnings telling its users to potentially change their passwords. Essentially, if you visited the site during this period of time, even though you have an encrypted session, the bad guy is able to potentially uh, sniff your password and steal it. So if you're a Bitcoin uh, user, be sure to go change your password. The other big Bitcoin heist affected a a site, an underground site called the Sheep Marketplace. And this is essentially a site very much like the Silk Road. In fact, it was the one that kind of took over when the Silk Road got taken down. A site that might sell drugs and other illegal paraphernalia. In any case, it turns out that some sort of external hackers were able to exploit vulnerabilities to make it seem like many people's wallets were still full of Bitcoin, when in reality they've actually transferred all those Bitcoin out. And they were able to steal 96,000 Bitcoin, which at today's prices are almost 100 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin. So it's a very big heist. Now a lot of people on Reddit have actually uh, kind of taken uh, onus to try try to follow this particular heist by paying attention to Bitcoin transfers, which are only pseudo-anonymous. You're not totally anonymous on Bitcoin. Your actual transfers can be seen by the public. So different people on Reddit are trying to track this illegally stolen Bitcoin to see where it goes and to make sure that the attackers can't do something called tumble it, which is essentially laundering illegal Bitcoin. In any case, it seems there's been a lot of Bitcoin-focused attacks lately. While the currency is getting more legitimacy and governments are looking at it, it still is kind of a dangerous currency to use if you don't know what you're doing. So I'd be very careful if you're considering Bitcoin and, and don't store it in online wallet. Store it on your own USB stick and protect it. Moving on to a story from late last week or early this week is a story about a new zero-day vulnerability in Windows, specifically a local kernel uh, elevation of privilege vulnerability. Uh, Late last week, a security organization found some uh, zero-day exploits. Basically, it was an exploit that came as a PDF document, and it used a a non-zero-day, a previously known vulnerability in Reader, to take over a user's computer. 
However, this particular reader vulnerability didn't necessarily guarantee that the attacker gained system or full administrator privilege on a Windows computer. So included within this PDF exploit was also a new zero-day Windows vulnerability, and this was a local elevation of privilege flaw vulnerability. So essentially, uh, even if someone can gain guest access to your Windows computer, they can leverage this flaw to gain full system privilege and do whatever they want on your computer. Now, my Microsoft has since released a security advisory for this flaw, and they actually have a workaround you can implement so that this flaw doesn't affect you. Now, it is a local flaw, so it's not a huge deal, but I recommend you check out that security advisory, and we'll be sure to let you know when Microsoft releases a patch for it. Another big story this week was news of over 2 million uh, credentials for many popular sites being leaked. Uh, there are a bunch of stories talking about how credentials for Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Google, Yahoo, and also organizations like ADP, which do payroll for many companies. Anyways, there are stories about 2 million credentials for these various online sites being leaked out to the public in the criminal underground. Now, some news organizations falsely said that perhaps these companies were breached, but as it turns out, a security company called Trustwave Spider Labs had actually found the command and control center for a new botnet, which they've codenamed Pony. And they actually found all these 2 million credentials on the Pony botnet's command and control channel. And this is actually not that unusual. Of course, if you install a bot client on a bunch of victim computers, one of the things you do is use those zombie computers to steal user credentials and then store them in your command and control channel. So while this isn't a big breach against Facebook or Gmail, it does show that bad guys do have many people's credentials. At the same time, they also have control of the computers of these particular victim people. So anyways, your learnings here is you definitely don't want to get infected with botnets. Be sure to run AV software, keep it up to date. Be careful what you download on the internet and where you go. And I also recommend using IPS. IPS is intrusion prevention software and it can prevent uh, uh, the exploits that often allow bad guys to install botnets on your computer. The final story I want to share tonight is kind of fun and involves something called skyjacking all those flying drones you hear about. It actually began as a video released this week by a well-known white hat hacker called Sammy, and he was talking about his program he recently created called Drone Strike. Now you might have heard of the AR drone parrot devices. These are quadricopter drones that you can fly with your Android or iPhone device. Lots of fun to play with, and I think I've talked about them in these videos before. They have a hacking community to do all kinds of cool things, and at one point a hacker also released a virus that infected drones. Well, essentially, Sammy's new drone hacking kit was, was very similar to that virus. What Sammy did was he created a, a small little wireless computer using a Raspberry Pi, and he also bought a special USB wireless device, a, uh, one of the chipsets that's very good at doing wireless hacks because it's kind of able to send raw packets, and it can use something called monitor mode where it can monitor all wireless traffic, even encrypted wireless traffic, and inject raw packets packets within that traffic. In any case, using this Raspberry Pi attached to his evil drone, he could actually fly around monitoring for other AR drones, which have a very specific MAC address. And if he saw those other AR drones, he could actually send special deauthentication packets to knock them off so they're not connected to their owner anymore. Once they were knocked off the connection with their owner, he could take them over and do whatever he wanted to, maybe create his own drone army so they're all flying information back to his house. In any case, it's kind of a fun hack, but it also shows you of how the Internet of Things is also very hackable. There's so many embedded devices out in the world today, devices that look like normal consumer gadgets, but they're really embedded computers with wireless connectivity. And we need to make sure to secure these devices as well. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it fun and interesting. And as usual, if you'd like more information on any of these stories or any extra stories I might post, be sure to check out the WatchGuard Security Security Center's post associated with this video. I'll have a lot of links in that post. And you should also check out the WatchGuard Security Center blog on a regular basis. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdapt, or follow our company WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.